So by the end of this video, you will be able to explain chapter six of Michael Heiser's book, Supernatural. And to prove it, you will be able to describe how God reveals himself in human form in the Old Testament as the word of Yahweh, the angel of Yahweh, and is the name of Yahweh. And as a bonus, you'll also be able to describe how the New Testament authors connect the dots between these Old Testament references in Jesus. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tim, and I'm on a mission to help everyday church attenders become Psalm 1 readers, men and women who love the scriptures and meditate on them day and night. And again, if this is your first time, you just tuned in for my book club series where I walk through scholarly works chapter by chapter. And in this series, we're walking through Michael Heiser's book, Supernatural. There's 16 chapters in this book, so I'll be making 16 videos total. I encourage you to bookmark this playlist. That way you have access to all of the videos about all of the chapters in one place. But without further ado, let's get to the content for this video. Now, it's just a quick recap from what we talked about last week. God judged humanity at the Tower of Babel by assigning to the nations differing members of God's heavenly council. But God chose Abraham and his offspring, who would become the people of Israel, to be his allotted portion. And then through this people, he would restore what was lost in Eden. Now, here's the big idea. In chapter 6, Heiser is going to argue that starting with Abraham, God reveals himself in human form multiple times. And the biblical authors capture this in three primary ways. by referring to the word of Yahweh, the angel of Yahweh, and is the name of Yahweh. So let's see how Heiser builds his case. So question number one, where does God come in human form as the word of Yahweh? Way. So the first example that Heiser points to is Abraham. So in Genesis chapter 12, the text tells us that God appeared to Abraham. So this isn't a dream or something that's just in Abraham's head. And then in chapter 15, the text tells us that the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. So a vision is something that you see. We see the exact same thing happen to his son Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. But Heiser's favorite example of this is 1 Samuel chapter 3, where God calls to Samuel. So in verse 10, the text reads, And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times. And then in verse 15, again, we read that these instances were visions. Visions, again, are something that you see. So Abraham, Isaac, Samuel, they all saw God appear to them. Now, it's just a quick aside. Many of you are rightly thinking, but doesn't the Bible say that no one can see God and live? If you're thinking that, you would be correct. But Heiser argues that the reason why these people don't die is because God, here's a quote from pages 59 through 60, he says, because God filtered his presence through something the human mind could process, a fire, a cloud, and more often than many Christians realize, a man. So this leads us to the second question, question number two, where does God come in human form as the angel of Yahweh? So a great example of this is Exodus chapter three. In verse two, we read, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the midst of the bush. But then in verse four, the text reads, God called to him from the burning bush. So this is fascinating. Who's in the burning bush? Is it the angel of Yahweh? Is it Yahweh? Is it both? This leads us to the third question. Question number three, where does God come in human form as the name of Yahweh? So here's another great example from Exodus. Don't miss this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 20. God says, behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and to bring you to the place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him for he will not pardon your transgression for my name is in him. So Heiser says, this is no normal angel because the angel, number one, he forgives sins. And number two, the name of God is in him. So here's what's interesting in the point that Heiser makes. The name of God is another way of referring to God himself. So uh, as an example of this, Isaiah chapter 30, verse 27, it says, behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar. In fact, many Jews today still refer to God as Hashem, which is translated as the name. In fact, even in many modern day worship songs, we're going to sing about God's name or we'll make references to the name of Jesus. So again, the point is the name of God is another way of referring to God himself. So question number four, how do the New Testament authors connect the dots between these Old Testament references to Jesus? And Heiser is going to argue that they make these connections rather explicitly. So let's start with the word. So in John chapter one, verse one, John writes, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Again, in verse 14, John says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Heiser is going to argue that the original, uh, original readers who are well acquainted with the scriptures, they're going to read this and immediately be hyperlinked back to Genesis 15, that text that we already looked at. In fact, even when we get to John chapter eight, verse 56, Jesus tells the Jews, your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day 
and he saw it. So that's the word. What about the angel of the Lord? So remember what we already talked about. The angel brought Israel out of Egypt. But in that short New Testament letter called Jude, Jude tells us in verse 5, Now I want to remind you that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So who led the Israelites out of Egypt? Was it Yahweh? Was it the angel of Yahweh? Was it Jesus? And the answer that the scriptures provide is yes. So last one, what about the names? So in John chapter 17, verse 5, Jesus prays, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Again, in verse 26, Jesus prays, I made known to them your name and will continue to make it known. So here's what uh, Heiser writes. He says, Jesus wasn't saying he let people know what God's name was. They were Jews. They knew what God's name was. It was Yahweh. They had the Old Testament. They could look up God's name in thousands of verses. But when Jesus said he had manifested God's name to the people, he meant he had manifested God himself to the people. He was God before their eyes. He was the name made flesh. So there's chapter six. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and then go tell someone about it. If this video served you well though, like it, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the video for chapter seven.